thing about carbon fiber is it would be perfect in real life if Gundam was a real thing and we piloted these things. It's lightweight, it's extremely strong, very durable, and that is one of the great attributes. Hello everyone! I'm back, kind of, sort of, but here's something new for you anyway. But for now, what we're going to talk about today is carbon fiber. Yes, this is a real sheet of carbon fiber. It is really cool. I love this stuff. I've used it on many of my cars before that I've modded. It's very lightweight. It's very strong. The only catch with this stuff is the fact that it's pretty difficult to produce quality carbon fiber pieces because it involves vacuuming all the bubbles out of the resin that you have to lay over the carbon fiber fabric. It involves using an autoclave, which gets really hot. It's like a giant oven and it bakes this stuff really hot till eventually it becomes so hard that in many instances, its properties are stronger than a piece of metal, depending on the metal we're talking about. I'm being very vague, I'm being very general with that. That's just the basic overview. Today, what I'm gonna tell you is carbon fiber would be really cool if Gundams were a real thing. It's lightweight, it's strong, and it would make total sense to make a Gundam out of carbon fiber. The problem is this weave is actually too big. It's not to scale and really to form it, shape it, and put the resin over it and do all that other kind of stuff for a small 1 100th or even 1 35th scale Gundam is going to be very difficult and really just not practical. So how do we accomplish carbon fiber look with paint? That is what we're going to talk about today. So let me organize my disaster piece of a work area here because I'm in mid project right now. Get it reorganized, get those lovely spoons out for all of you to see, and then we are going to start doing some samples. So. Spoons! That's what you need right now, lots of spoons. The other thing you're going to need is pantyhose. Now, it's a good question. Where did I put my pantyhose? The pantyhose that I'm going to be using right now, I've already used before, and yeah, it is actually kind of reusable, which is weird, you wouldn't think so. This is basically what we're going for. Just any kind of run-of-the-mill pantyhose, not really much of a science to it. There's different types of weaves and things like that for some of the pantyhoses, I guess. I don't know, I don't wear them. And these spoons are what are going to net you at least some practice because it does take a little bit to be able to get this look completed the right way. So once you have your spoons available, you're also gonna to wanna to pull out some different types of metallics here some different tinted colored clears here, and some black base. So what I'm gonna be using today is a Tamiya semi-gloss black paint as the base. You could also do something like a metallic gray. So let's get to it. I'm gonna to have to turn on my fan, so that means audio is gonna get a little funky, but hopefully you can understand. All right, so now that we've got the fan on making lots of excess noise, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with this spoon is get your pantyhose that you're doing, and you're gonna to wanna to stretch it over the spoon. Couple things to keep in mind though. You do not want to stretch it too much. If you stretch it too much, it's going to ruin the carbon effect because in real carbon fiber, it's generally a tight weave as shown in this right here. These fibers are not pulled apart to where you've got these huge air gaps in them. And you don't wanna do that for something that is curved, or in this situation, a spoon, which spoons are normally curved unless we're talking about the ones that I used to get beat with as a kid. Those hurt. So what you're going to do is take your pantyhose, stretch it over your spoon like so. Now I'm not gonna edit this, I'm just gonna show you what I go through with it. And when you stretch it over, you now have a situation where you've got areas that are uncovered and areas that are covered by the pantyhose. We're gonna take advantage of that by spraying over this and that's what's going to give us that patterned look. What we'll do now is paint, and then I'll show you how to stick this together, a couple of different ways I do it, and a few other things. So what I just did off camera is paint two of these spoons black. And this is the base that you wanna use when doing the carbon fiber. Now, can you go and spray another color as your base? Possibly, but we're trying to go in for the typical, nice little gray carbon fiber sheen. But you can also change the color of the carbon fiber, which I'm gonna show you the second these things dry. So let me wait a couple seconds and through the magic of time editing. Now that this has dried a bit, I'm going to take my little piece of pantyhose. I'm using another one because this other one is kind of nice. I don't want to ruin it yet. And yes, this is reusable, by the way. As long as you don't clog it up with too much paint, you can reuse the pantyhose, which is kind of pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is take the pantyhose now and I'm going to stretch this over my spoon like so. 
And this can get a little annoying sometimes because it may just want to slide right off. But what I'm doing now is tightening it with a knot. Once I stretch it over, I just kind of twist it into a knot and take a paint stick that I've done or any other kind of clip that you want to use and clip that area down. And now what that does is hold this into place. So now my weave is not going to go anywhere unless there's a strong gust of wind and it's going to end up staying in place while I paint it. Something to keep in mind, you want to make sure that the pattern all flows in a similar direction. You want symmetry here. And what I mean by that, plus on top of that, you want uniformity. What I mean by that is, uh, I don't know how many of you are into cars like I am, and throughout the past, I've had carbon fiber hoods that I've put over my car. Now, if you see an improperly laid carbon fiber hood, it looks like trash because the weave is all over the place. It's a muddled mess doesn't look good and the same principle is going to apply when putting this on a Gundam kit but for now what we're gonna do is take our lighter color that we're gonna spray over this which in this case I'm going to use just the little bit lighter shade of metal and spray it over in a relatively medium pattern I'm not gonna gob it on but just get good color coverage over the entire thing just making good color coverage and that's about it we're not putting too much of the paint on there. We just want it to cover just enough to be able to give the look. The other thing is you don't want to pull this off immediately, but depending on the kind of paint that you're using, you may want to give it about a minute, two, three minutes until you pull this off. Now, if you're using lacquers, you're going to want to wait longer. Enamels wait longer. They're longer drying times. I'm using acrylic here, so I can pull this off relatively quickly in the amount of time it takes me to just blab this instruction out to you. So. Give me another five, 10 seconds to clean this out. I'll come back and then I'll peel this pantyhose off. So here is the carbon fiber weave finish. As you can see, it kind of looks like carbon fiber. What I'm gonna do from this now is throw some smoke clear coat over it. Now that stuff is right here. It's an X19 from Timia. This stuff, when I spray the smoke clear, is gonna give it that depth. It's gonna make it look like a real piece of carbon fiber. So I'm gonna put the phone right back and I'm gonna spray this and I'm gonna show you. So when you're clear coating with the smoke clear, you kind of want to don't do too many layers in one shot because then you can get runs and then it will look bad. So just go lightly, a little bit over it. Sorry, I don't have it showing you like, you know, I can't really do that. But you know what, for the sake of it, I'm just gonna go over it again. I don't care if it's wet and it drips, but I just need to show you this finish. And there is the finished look after we've given maybe about three coats of the smoke clear. Now as you can see it gives the same carbon fiber effect that sheen in real life. And how do I say that confidently? Because I got a real piece of carbon fiber here. And look at how that moves along and dances and plays with the light. And how that moves along and dances and plays with the light. So what I will do now instead is take this spoon that I already showed you before that's got the smoke clear coat and I'm actually just going to hit this with some red clear coat on top of the smoke and I'm going to show you how you can tint this. And there is the red carbon fiber effect. Now granted it's a lot darker than if I would have just done a red clear and none of the smoke clear but the point is this is just to show you that you can tint this any color that you want and it will give that nice carbon sheen. Now what I'm going to do is put this phone back and I'm going to show you what it looks like on a kit. So here is a comfer from Bandai. It's a master grade comfer that I did. And in this kit, I used that carbon fiber effect on the arms and on some of the legs right here. And there it is. This is pretty much what the effect looks like when applied correctly on a Gundam. It's going to give that same type of carbon fiber effect. Now, I don't like to do this crazy all over the kits. I do it relatively sparingly on some, a little bit more on others. But at the end of the day, when you know how to balance this look out, it's really gonna make a huge difference and elevate your paint finishes to that next level. And that's all there basically is to it. You wanna get your pantyhose, you get your spoon or whatever Gundam kit you're going to be painting. Remember to stretch it over, keep in mind the patterning, make sure it's symmetrical if you're doing it on a left and right side. Make sure the weave looks properly, it's not stretched too much. And make sure that you use a darker base with a lighter base. All things considered, I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you very much for watching. 
Quick channel update. It's been four months since you all have seen any videos from me. And why that is, is, well, just go outside. Just four months ago, we were walking around no problem. Now people got masks on and there's crazy stuff happening in the world. And really that's also part of the reason why I have not been able to film part three of the Gundam building for seniors because kind of keeping a distance from my father right now at the moment. They're old, both my parents and um, my wife is a nurse. She's back to work. And by the way, she was out of work for four months. She blew her ACL four months ago and uh, completely obliterated it. Had to get reconstructive surgery on it. And during that time, I became caretaker, full-time caretaker, full-time sole provider. And um, yeah, a lot of other personal responsibilities that I carry outside of what you see here on YouTube and on Instagram. So it's been a lot. I've been working about maybe 12, 14 hour days, almost seven days a week. And uh, it's been pretty tough, but thankfully, light at the end of the tunnel, wife is walking around, she's back to work, as I mentioned before, but now she's a risk because she's in front of positive patients that test for this sickness, this virus, this thing. Eventually, the video with uh, Gundam Building for Seniors and my father, it will come out in time. My dad's dying to finish that video for you, and I'll find a way, we'll find a way to get it to be done safely without issue. One other thing I want to mention is thank you for all of you that have stuck around during these four months, all of you that have supported me. You know, a lot of people get uh, frustrated and tell me, why don't I have more subscribers? I've only got like, I'm approaching, I think, 5,000 now. I'm grateful for that. And quite frankly, I don't really dwell on that kind of stuff. I just kind of do. I just kind of produce. And I do it really just to make you all happy and uh, to be able to teach you all what I know. And as I learn new things and I have the time, I'll show you new things. Another thing about time is the gap for when I'm able to release videos may vary. And just being very transparent, my actual job, which is doing the commission builds, has kind of gotten to the point where I'm booked now for the next year and a half. And um, I'm grateful for that. But uh, I'm only one person with two hands and 24 hours in a day. I wish I had eight arms and 48 hours in a day. And I never had to sleep. That would be fantastic, but it's just not the case. So if you go back and look at all my videos, as YouTube tells me there's a new comment, I go and I reply. So if you have a question or you need help on any finishes or you're snagged on any kind of uh, customizations you're doing, let me know. Thanks again for watching everyone. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you did, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps greatly in being able to build this channel a bit more and its audience and to be able to share this information with others. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks again for watching and...